I want you to turn real quick. I'm not going to take too much of your time to uh, 1 Timothy 6, verse 12. And then we're going to flip to 2 Timothy 4, uh, verse 8. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession and professed in front of many witnesses. Second scripture, brother. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, finally there is laid up crown of righteousness, which the Lord and the righteous judge will give me on that day, and not to just me, but also to all who have loved his appearance. There, uh, last time Pastor Ted was preaching on Joshua, that uh, Joshua took over Moses, and he told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Be strong, be courageous. Uh, there's something to be said whenever you open your mouth and you make the decision to follow the Lord and do what He tells you to do. There's a cost that you have to pay. Everybody has to pay if you're doing exactly what God has told you to do. And in this letter, Paul is basically at, at the end of his life and he's telling Timothy, he's trying to instruct Timothy, Fight the good fight of faith. What exactly does that mean? Fight the good fight of faith. Not just any faith. Not faith in Buddha, not faith in Muhammad. But fight the good fight of faith that God has given to us and He revealed to us, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole Bible is centered on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. From Genesis to Revelation, it all points to Jesus Christ. Without Him dying, there will be no forgiveness of your sin or my sin. You know, this week, uh, a friend called, well, texted me and said, I just got wind of uh, what happened to you. You, you know, you get in a wreck and stuff like that. And uh, told me that if there's anything that I could do for you, don't hesitate to ask. Don't be shy to ask. And I text back and I said, the only thing I ask is for you to pray for me that no matter what happens to me, I will not ever stop preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has called us to proclaim, each and every one of us to proclaim the Word of God. Maybe He hasn't called you to get up on a pulpit. Maybe He hasn't called you to, to give conferences. But He has called you to go wherever you go and speak the name of Jesus Christ. Introduce Him to others. He's called you to do that. But Paul says here, Fight the good fight of faith. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be easy. And I love to look around me and see older generations that have gone before me. Miss uh, Mary, Larry, uh, Jose, and Anita, Miss Miller, uh, Pastor Miller, that's gone before me. And I know... I know a little something about their lives, but I, I can just imagine the private stuff that they don't share. It wasn't always easy to go to Tlingua. It wasn't always easy to get up every day with, with the heart condition, pray that God would heal Brother Larry. It wasn't easy, Pastor Miller, to, to keep coming to church after you, you, you lost your grandson, after you, after you lost your ability to walk. It wasn't easy. But I'm encouraged by that. Paul says, be encouraged that I fought a good fight of faith. I fought the good fight. And there's a crown that I'm going to be rewarding. And not just only to me, but to everybody that loves his appearance. Jesus Christ is coming back. A lot of people always tell me, you know, Brother J, I, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm kind of nervous to, 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 you know, you know, spread the gospel. I'm kind of nervous to tell anybody about Jesus because 
I'm not, you know, I don't have a theological seminary degree. And one person told me that, and I kind of paused, and I said, you know what? I was invited to a conference that I was one of the speakers of, and before me, there was theologians that were were saying a whole bunch of things, and I mean, it was it was one, you know, I was like, like you know, I, I don't know that much, but God quickened me and said, "Keep it plain." And all I went up there and said, "God heals, saves, and delivers. He heals, saves, and delivers." You know, I'm I'm a butcher at heart. And, I mean, I'm a butcher in trade. I love me a good prime rib. I love prime rib. Prime grade prime rib. Tender, juicy, it tastes so good. But I'm bothered by people that want to put other stuff on it. Like, you know, they put A1 sauce on it. They put this and that. Anytime somebody invite me for a prime rib, keep it plain. A prime rib is a prime rib, and it doesn't need any help. It's naturally flavorful. It's naturally tender. Keep it plain. Whenever you're preaching the gospel of Christ, you got to keep it plain. Don't add. Don't take away from anything. You know, this church is is prime example. You know, there's churches that, that have big screen. They have they have smoke. They have they have a show. They have a show because they tell me, well, we got to keep it spicy. We got to add stuff to keep people coming. You don't need anything but the gospel. They said, well, Brother JR is just old school. I just thought, I'm old school. No, that's just the gospel of Christ. Keep it plain. Joshua, be strong and courageous. Keep this word in front of you. Don't go to, to the left or to the right. Just do what it says to do. Be careful. Keep His ordinance, His commandments. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be careful and not so shy to spread the gospel. Are you doing what God has called you to do? Because if you are, you can ask all these older saints here. If you want to, if God tells you to go to Tilingua, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. There's going to be all hell broke, breaking loose in your life. Because the, the enemy, the devil, doesn't want to get, for you to get the gospel out to people. Because he knows his time is short. And our time is short. We need to, to get the gospel out. He tells Timothy, be strong and courageous. I mean, he tells Timothy, I have fought the good fight of faith. I've, I have a crown waiting for me. You know, in this world, you have trouble, you have tribulations. Don't get involved of all these things that are happening in this world. You know, I was thinking the other day, you know, there's an election coming up. What's going to happen? You know, are, are my rights as a Christian going to be taken away? Are, you know, am I going to be able to work and still proclaim the gospel of Christ? Am I going to be able to go and preach the gospel of Christ. And then I started getting anxious because I said, what if they take this Bible away from me? What if they take a Bible away, the physical book? What if they take the Bible away from me? One thing they can't take away from me is Jesus Christ in me. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. I have to have it hidden in my heart. And I don't have to make this gospel so difficult that it's, it's hard for me to, 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 to proclaim it. All you have to say is, Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. He paid full penalty for what you owed. He rose on the third day and now he's sitting in the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. Keep it simple and keep the main thing the main thing. Don't veer off to the left or to the right. And if, you're, if a lot of people are giving you advice to spice it up, put a little of this, put a little of that, keep it 
simple and keep it plain. I say it all, all the time to, to the workers that I train. Quit making it so complicated. Go back to the beginning. Keep it simple. Follow rules. Follow the rules. You, you, there's the three rules that you have to follow. Quit, quit trying to put your own spin on it and you'll be okay. I have 35 years cutting meat and I haven't cut off a finger. And I've seen people that think they know it all cut off fingers. Do you know the, the, the thing that amazes me that the Titanic was constructed by professionals, right? But the ark was constructed by a non-professional. But he did exactly what God told him to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Let's keep it plain because there's lives hanging in the balance. God wants you to speak to people around you. Every time I, I get off at a store, I always talk to at least one person if I have a chance. I want to make sure that that's the number one priority in my life. Not paying my bills, not getting to the doctor's appointment, not paying the taxes, my income tax, whatever. The main thing is to speak to somebody today about Christ, even if it's one person. Sometimes it's multiple people, but even if it's just one person, God desires that nobody should perish but come to everlasting life. If he desires that and he's in us, we should desire that as well. Where are we if, if we just pass by people and don't even talk to them? Tell them that Jesus Christ still saves, heals, and delivers. I know that you went to church and you got hurt. I know that they promised you a mansion and a Mercedes Benz. But they're not pre presenting you the real gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, I don't want to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. Keep it simple. Keep it plain. Anybody can proclaim the word of God. All he needs is the Holy Spirit and the power of God. I don't care if you're one of the dumbest per people in this world. God in you, the hope of glory, will give hope to other people. Keep it plain. Keep it simple. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Don't add. Don't take away. Just do what he tells you to do. One time, Pastor Miller gave me a, a letter to, to give to... Uh, the park and uh, they uh, he said go ahead and open it and read it to him so I opened it and re read it to him I read it I read just exactly the way he, he 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 had it written up there and I didn't add I didn't take away that's what he said I didn't say it he said that there it is there's nothing added there's nothing that I took away that's the letter that's it. And when I translate, I try to translate as best I can, word for word, line upon line, precept upon precept, and don't add, don't take away, don't add a little flavor, nothing. Just make it simple, make it plain. It's not that hard. God requires us to all proclaim, to be preachers, to proclaim the word of God. And we don't have to have a theological degree to do it. And we don't have to be intimidated if we are asked to get in front of people and present the gospel. You know, Pastor Miller took me to a conference one time and there was all these theologians, all these pastors for a long time. Uh, and one preacher said, I always do what God tells me to do. And he got up there at the very last night and he started preaching the gospel. He says, is anybody here saved? And it was a pretty, pretty big amount of pastors that come up front. All these other preachers and pastors and theologians were wanting to get the root word of the Greek word of this, the Greek word of that, and was making it so complicated. One pastor just did exactly what God told him to do. And he said, he, 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 he states that he, he, Lord, how in the world am I going to going to preach the gospel to a bunch of preachers and, and evangelists here. All of them are saved. I know they're saved. I mean, they got to be saved. 57, 57, he said, weren't. 
57 weren't. So we got, it's simple, just do whatever the Lord tells you to do. We talked about hearing God's voice, how important that is, that you need not to mix it up with your thoughts or, or anything else. Know that God tells, tells you to do it. And if God commanded you to do it, be strong and courageous, and it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight. It's gonna, and take the testimonies of these older people that have gone before us and say, if they can do it, how'd you do it? By keep getting up every day, keep fighting, keep fighting the good fight of faith. And you know what? Everybody here is commanded to, to, to you know, run your own race. I'm not going to run your race, and you're not going to run my race. But the good thing is, nobody, this race is not about coming in first or second or third. It's about finishing the race. You got to finish the race. God doesn't require you to, to get there first. He requires you to finish it. I finished the race. And you will receive the crown. You will receive a crown. And the crown is not for you to lay at the feet of Jesus Christ. What kind of crown are you going to have? Fight the good fight of faith. Run the race and finish it. You got to decide if you're on the Lord's side or you're on your side. What side are you on? You got to, if you're on the Lord's side, it's going to be a fight. And if he tells you to do something, it's going to be a fight. And you're going to fight with everything you have to, to defend, to, to honor God's word, to honor God. And if he tells you, open your mouth and proclaim the gospel, you open your mouth. Well, I'm not smart enough. Don't, I don't care. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm shy. You open your mouth and do exactly what God tells you to do when he tells you to do it and leave the consequences to him. Uh, I get it all the time at work. JR. HR. HR. I can't be intimidated by HR. If God tells me to, to open my mouth, I'm going to open my mouth. Not out of arrogance, out of obedience to Him. Because if God doesn't tell me to say anything, I won't say a thing. But if God prompts me to say something, I don't care if all my bosses are there and their bosses they're going to hear it too. Because I'm going to be responsible for their blood if I don't tell them they're doing wrong. So we need to make a difference in people's lives, not the other way around. I've seen so many Christians go into the workplace or to other places, and now they're getting sucked in to, to go on parties and stuff, even churches. I've gone to a couple of churches, and quite frankly, if they were to blindfold me, and then they would take the blindfold off, I wouldn't know if I was in a church or in a club. Because number one, I don't hear the name of Jesus, I don't hear the blood, I don't hear the cross. I hear I love you, uh, I can't be without you, uh, you're, you're my superhero. In that right there, that song, Superhero, that just offends me. God is not my superhero. God's not a superhero. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Superheroes have flaws even Superman had kryptonite. My God is the king of kings. He's all powerful and all knowing. He is the king of kings. And I will not disrespect him by calling him superhero. So do what God tells you to do. And it's going to be a fight. Paul says, Timothy, I fought a good fight. But you know what? I don't care about anything. I've, I've, been, I've been left out for dead. I've been beaten. I've been uh, whipped with the cat of nine tails. You know, one day Paul, Paul asked for prayer. And he says, pray that I, that I might have more boldness to proclaim the gospel. We've got to get to the point is, can I pray for you, brother? Uh, you know what? Pray for me that, you know, I get a new car. I, I, I get a new job. I need, I need, no. Pray for me that I might have more boldness wherever God sends me that I could proclaim the gospel of Christ. Pray for me no matter what happens to me. If I get in a wreck, in that wreck, I'm going to proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
wherever I go, I'm going to proclaim, 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 proclaim. That's my job here on earth. That's the race I got to run. And, and I got to finish this race. And I want to finish it strong. If I have to crawl to the finish line, I want to crawl to the finish line. If whatever it takes, you got to set it in your mind that you're going to do whatever the Lord tells you to do. You're going to hear His voice. You're going to be courageous. And you're going to fight the good fight of faith. No matter what your feelings say, no matter what your family says, no matter what your religion says, you're going to follow Christ no matter what. And you're going to believe whatever He tells you. And you're going to do whatever He tells you. And if you're today, if you're here today, and you're feeling like God has left you, let you down sometimes, He hasn't. He's already paid everything on the cross. I remember I, I, I preached the message that God doesn't owe you anything because He's given you everything. So if He's given you everything, you know, Paul wasn't Nero's slave. He says, I am the slave of Jesus Christ. We are indebted to the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. So no matter what happens in this life, our main focus is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Him crucified. And we are to proclaim it to everybody else. And we are to do exactly what God has called us to do. is to run this race and finish it. And present and get presented with the crown that we're going to lay down at His feet one day. So God bless you. God keep you. Go out there this week. Wherever you go, Walmart, gas station, if God gives you opportunity to speak, speak. I always come back and, and, and say the, the story about Pastor Miller. He had an opportunity to speak to a, to, to a gentleman, and he was selling feed. Uh, Pastor Miller was selling feed, and God said, go, go talk to him. Uh, Lord, I got, I got an agenda. I got... I got I got, you know, time is wasted. I need to get to the next place. I'll talk to him later. Well, Pastor Miller was true to his word. He came back later. He says, hey, where's that man over there? And they said, well, he has already passed on. Opportunities that God has given us, if we hesitate, that's disobedience. And if we jump, to, if we jump and we say, you know, we shouldn't jump for anybody snapping their fingers but if the Lord Jesus Christ tells you to do something, you should jump right then and there. Don't question. Don't, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. Uh, no. Just do whatever he tells you to do right away. And you'll see that he'll touch people through you. And you'll be a part of it. And, and it's very fulfilling. I don't care what happens to me. But I do care about the people around me. Like that lady that hit me, if she, if she could have died and gone to hell because she didn't know Jesus Christ. God gave her another opportunity. But who knows, who knows if, if she had a heart attack on the way back. But she, she had the opportunity whenever I told her about the Lord Jesus Christ. So that car wreck was an opportunity for me to spread to the firemen, to the policemen, to, to the lady, to everybody involved, the Lord loves you. The Lord wants to be with you. He wants you to be with Him in eternity. And you got a debt to pay. And only Jesus Christ paid that debt. And accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on Him and you shall be saved. And I thought I would get a lot of backlash with that. But everybody was quiet. And everybody goes, you preach it, brother. There's people there that could have gone to hell. If we could just grasp that, that reality, like Anita and, and uh, Brother Jose, I'm pretty sure they love these people so much that they don't want them to go to hell. They're ministering to their kids. They're, they're doing whatever it takes. They've, they've gotten, I imagine they've gotten broke down over there. They've, but they're fighting the good fight of faith. So we need to take examples of the people that have gone before us. Who else 
but Brother Paul could say, uh, you know, I fought the good fight of faith. Uh, he rejoiced in the midst of him being in prison, uh, whipped. Can you, can you pray that I ha might have more boldness? Because the number one priority for Paul was the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified to spread the gospel. And that's the heart that we should have. And we should do it with all our might, soul, and strength because we love the Lord. And finish this race. Finish it. God wants us to finish strong. And like I said, if you have to crawl to the finish line, you crawl. Because you're going to be in eternity with him. And he's going to wipe away your tears. He never promised you you weren't going to go through nothing. But he promised you that you would, he would be with you always. And he will wipe away your tears one day. So he is king of king and the Lord of lords. He, des he desires respect and obedience. Because he paid for your penalty on the cross. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. I want to be a believer. I want to hear God's word. I want God to speak to me. And I want to hear it and believe it and be a believer. And one of the ways to do that is to study or to read the names of God. How many know how many names of God there are in the Bible? Most of us don't know. Okay, well I've I've got a leg up on you. How many? Okay. Okay. I started to do that with the kids, kids, but uh, it got a little too hard. Decided they would uh, be a little confused and, and not be able to get them. But there are, uh, I believe, 41 names of Jesus alone. And I believe there are 28 names of God, not Jesus. Uh, that's not too many, is it? God wants us to know those names. God wants us to memorize those names. God wants us to repeat those names. I've discovered when I'm in a hard place, just by repeating the name of Jesus or Jehovah, our God Almighty, our Prince of Peace, or the Son of God, that that does something in my soul. It revives my soul. It quickens my spirit. It gives me a, 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 a peace to know that I can speak that name to know that God tells us in his word to speak that name and to speak it often and to speak it to other people. Just speaking the name of Jesus, uh, sometimes it might get you a uh, result you don't want. Have you ever had a result, brother, that you didn't want when you spoke the name of Jesus? Yes, sir. Sometimes they don't like that. They make a face or say, as one man told me, you need to take that back down to the church. That's where it belongs. Or HR. Or HR. <laughs> and they really believe that. That the name of Jesus is meant for inside the church. And that's a safe place, isn't it? We're probably not going to get anybody questioning us as to why we spoke the name of Jesus or why it affected them such as it did. But I challenge you, and I've got a couple of little pamphlets that I've wrote. The names have brought, one is the names of Jesus. 
The other one is the names of God. They cost about five dollars each at the bookstore. I would uh, encourage you, the Christian bookstore, I would encourage you to pick up one or both of those, both of them if possible, if you can afford ten dollars, and read them and read all those names. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to encourage you to. And I'm going to encourage you to read them to your children. And I'm going to encourage you to have your children to memorize them, one at a time, two at a time, whatever they can handle. Whatever you can handle. And see if that doesn't make a difference in your life. I believe it will. To mention the name of Jesus, to repeat the name of Jesus, to pray the name of Jesus and all the other titles that he has that you might know that you might share with others today we're going to be talking about doubt doubt who knows what doubt is science do what? Okay. I, do, I see you had your hand up. Doubting is when you don't when you don't trust or you highly suspect that something will not happen. Very good definition. Okay, now I have a little uh, box here. Does anybody know what's in this box? Would you like to make a guess? Anybody like to make a guess? You know, anybody want to rattle it? Guess? You can't open it. Make make one guess. One belt. guess. What? Belt. A belt? Belt. Oh, bells? Mm -hmm. Ball. Ball. Okay. Darcy. You don't have to shake it. You can just be thinking what you might... What it might be. Yeah, I was going to say What's that? Coins. 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 Anybody else? Make a guess. Coins. I need coins. Okay. Now, if I told you that I have a marble, a key, and a ring in this box, would you believe me? Yes. Yeah. Everybody would believe me? Yeah. Does anybody have a doubt? No, no doubt. No a doubts. Doubt. A little bit of a doubt. A little bit of a doubt. Okay. Now, how can I prove to you that I have a ring, a marble, and a what? Key. Key. How can I prove it to you? I can tell you all day long, but one has a doubt about it. How can I prove it? You got it. I'm going to see if it's really what I said it was. Okay. We've got a... We've got a... No. A ring. That's Brother Miller's uh, high school ring, I think. A ring. And a... Okay. So, I, I told you that that's what was in it, and it was what was in it. So, that was true, what I said. So, the doubter, a small doubt, can now know that that was what was in it. Now, the Bible tells us about a man who was sometimes called a doubter. He was called the twin, but he was also known as a doubter. Does anybody know who he was? Thomas. Thomas, yes. We know him as Thomas the Doubter. Now some facts about Thomas. First of all, he was one of Jesus' disciples. He walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He lived with Jesus. And when it came to the end of his ministry, to Jesus' ministry on earth, 
He told his disciples that he was going to die on the cross for the sins of mankind. And Thomas heard that. So he knew that Jesus was going to die on the cross. Third, he knew that after he died, he knew that there were prints of the nails in his hands, his feet, and then there was a big hole in his side. Remember where the soldier plunged it into his side? So he knew that all that had happened to him. He knew that a Roman soldier had stuck a spear into his side and he had the marks of that. But he did not believe that Jesus had really arisen from the dead. He knew he died. He knew he was wounded for our sins on the cross. But he didn't believe that he had really died. He was alive again. His uh, friends, the other apostles, told him that they had seen him. He had arisen from the dead. They had seen him. They had talked to him. But Thomas didn't believe. He didn't believe that he had really risen from the dead. He had to have proof. He was a doubter, and he had to have proof that Jesus was really alive, just like this. You had to have proof that what I said was in here was really in here. So he needed proof. So the Bible tells us in John, let's read that, what John did, what he said. And this is in John, John 20, starting in verse 24. Now Thomas called the, what did I say? Called the twin, one of the twelve disciples or apostles, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. See, Jesus had appeared to the other apostles and disciples. So after the other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in those nail scars and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. And guess who came? Jesus came. The doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. So the doors were all shut. So Jesus just walked through the walls. Then he said to them, then he said to Thomas, reach your fingers here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. He knew that that was Jesus. He knew that he was alive. He had come back to life just like he said he would. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that's us. We haven't seen, we haven't put our fingers into his hands and his side and his feet. But we believe that he died on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the dead and he is in heaven right now making intercession in heaven with the Father for us. So we want to not be doubters. We want to believe that what he says in this word, everything that he says is true. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that every word in it is true. And we thank you that you've preserved it down through the years so we can read and believe and know what you have for us to do on this earth and that you are who you say you are. Lord, please bless each one of these children that are here today, those that aren't here, that are normally here. I pray you'd bless them, Lord, and they would come to know you at an early age if they haven't already made that decision to follow you and believe that you are God's son. Believe that you died on the cross. Believe that you rose again. And that you're coming back soon to get us. And that we will all 
be in heaven with you forever if we have trusted you as our Savior. Bless the parents, Lord, of all these children. Give them wisdom to, to raise them in a godly way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.